All right, welcome to In the Spirit of Things, folks. Uh, yeah, this is our true kickoff. Uh, it's Wednesday night, and uh, feeling particularly froggy tonight. Uh, mm, you got to love it. Uh, all sorts of good stuff happening all over the world. Everybody's paying attention, I think, just a little bit. Um, yeah, between the banks and all the other crooks. and Yeah, we're going to share some love tonight. Uh, I'm going to share some different love. Uh, yeah, we're going to start off in a little bit uh, on the real issues of the day. Um, yeah, for those that are at private.me, they got the post. Uh, you got the attachments, and uh, we're going to share some love if you didn't uh, – Watch Freedom to Fascism, uh, basically the uh, international tax scam perpetrated on all my brothers and sisters in all these IMF-run countries. And I do have a special word for IMF, and it's not International Monetary Fund. So, folks, yeah, use your heads uh, what I'm talking about. I'm sure you can put two and two together because I'm the two and two plus four equals guy. Anyways, um, folks, I'm really fired up. Must be the coffee. It's all good. I'm having my big <laughs> cup, so if everybody's getting their memo, I got the big cup tonight. And no, I'm not going to be shutting the bleep up. It's all good. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> uh, hey, Brother John, you in the room? I am here. And I know Hi, John. Much, hey, I, know so. sister, I know Sister <laughs> Michelle's here. Uh, yeah, folks, uh, yeah. Uh, those that are on privacy.me, get the memos. Hey, it's, uh, it's all free. Go sign up. Uh, that's where you get your learn on. That's where you get your... Um, Direction of flow. This is what I talk about because what I'm going to share tonight, you're definitely want to come over to my house after I get done talking tonight because uh, hey, we're creative. We're the creative guys. Uh, we understand what's going on. They understand that we understand what's going on, and frankly, they're really scared witless. It's really beautiful. Anyways, um, for those of you who think I talk fast, you just got to listen fast. That's how this works. Okay. <laughs> Matter of fact, hey, you can you can you can play back the tape and go over if you didn't catch it the first time. <laughs> Anyways, folks, I'm feeling really excited tonight. This is uh, going to be an excellent show. Uh, we're going to cover stuff of substance, stuff that they don't cover on any other station probably in the freaking um, world because um, I like to share the love. Uh, this is where I live. We don't war with anybody. We go to peace, and we're going to teach that over at my house um, on different levels. But uh, before I get started, uh, I'm going to get to Brother John in about two seconds. But, uh, yeah, folks, uh, if you'd like to see a three-page document uh, to the corporate whores that be, that's our brothers and sisters over at the inner, uh, the, it's called the IRS, CRA, doesn't matter, whatever the clowns of the circus call themselves, they're all private for, they're all private for-profit corporations extracting from, uh, excuse me, extracting from your um, estate. Hey, folks, you have an estate. It all started with the birth certificate bond. I was doing a curriculum uh, over at uh, Freedom Reigns there for a while, but um, couldn't get nobody to get their uh, books and pens to come to my class, so I just terminated that. So it's all posted over at the site on the calls, the information, uh, and it's free. Anyways, um, yeah, so anyways, folks, we ain't about the money. We about the truth here. So um, all the other clowns, they're about the, uh, raping the estates of my brothers and sisters until their butts fall off. Well, that's all right. We're going to help fix that. Uh, we're going to share the love, and we're going to move forward down a different direction. But if you haven't seen, like I say, for all those who are on the privatist.me, they get these memos. I sent out uh, the three-page corporate papers uh, filed in 1933 in the corporate state of Delaware, and it shows uh, the IRS is a private corporation. No, they are not government, folks. There is no government. It's all corporate whores. And by the way, yeah, they're paying the corporate whores called the IMF. So if you think your tax dollars stay in USA Inc., Canada Inc., or any other uh, IMF-run country, folks, all you're doing is subsidizing the interest to the bankers. And by the way, it's, that's a, what's a called a mathematical anomaly that will never be satisfied. So in essence, it's a game over type situation. It's going to collapse, I promise. I'm not into beer porn. But hey, you can't uh, poop that doesn't exist. Five out of ten countries uh, have just pulled out. Um, so folks, yeah, I actually um, cover news of the day a little bit. So I'm going to be a newscaster for a second. Uh, if you don't know what the BRICS are, uh, go ahead and punch in BRICS, B-R-I-C-S. That's uh, Brazil, Russia, India, China, uh, South America. They're not playing ball in the IMF, and the IMF is not happy. We don't care that they're not happy. I know I don't care they're not happy. Uh, you know, I could care less because they've been raping the estates. And if you go watch that beautiful video, um, Freedom to Fascism, which was posted uh, in the email uh, that went out to about 1,400-plus today, um, you can get your mind right, and you can find out the real truth because we ask questions and they don't answer dip, okay? So that's the whole point. They think somebody died and left them king, and we're going to fix that problem. Uh, folks, because the power's with you, it's not with them. So take your fear hats off and start moving forward. I'm going to show you how. Anyways, um, 
Brother Johnny, I'm getting a little excited. Forgot to take my medication. It's Rants <laughs> Are Us tonight. It's a beautiful night, and we're going to share the love. The show. Good start to the show. <laughs> but I, hey, Brother John, yeah, I, I just got your post, uh, your beautiful post uh, from this. Um, hey, folks, uh, they like to make legal determinations from on high in hubris and dictates. Uh, see, because somebody they think somebody died and left them God, because they don't have a clue. They aren't God, but uh, hey, they're going to get the memo eventually. Uh, yeah, you got people like Scalia leaving office, uh, who's leaving the country. Uh, yeah, that's one of the top justices in USA Inc., folks. Uh, He's not real happy because he knows he's a party to the scam, and so he's not happy, so he's rolling. I don't know if Clarence uh, Thomas is going to roll, too. Who the hell knows? Who cares? They're all, part, they're all uh, basically um, operating as incestuous whores to the same financial system. So they're all bought and paid for. So guess what, folks? That's bad intent. That's um, – how do you put um, – I'm trying to think, the, think of the word um, when uh, – oh, yeah, conflict of interest. Hey, folks, can you say conflict of interest – that's the same with your court system, big pharma, medical, FDA. All the whores are in bed together to guess what? Extricate penal sums and massive sums out of your backside because you're just a mere hypothecation event, and it started with your birth certificate bond. This has been going on since 1933. Anyways, if you didn't get the memo, go watch. Uh, hey, you can pull it up. Freedom to Fascism. You can probably find the video anywhere on YouTube, and uh, go watch that for a minute. And um, It'll give you a new educational shift, um, and it'll show you some truth that you probably were totally unaware of. Anyways, Brother John, before I so I won't uh, be ranting all night because uh, I am in rare form tonight. Well, I, I know I I know why you're you're amped up. Uh, you know, getting the news I told you today, and uh, you, uh, you know you can't blame you. Um, so the saga goes. <laughs> yeah, the saga. Uh, hey, John, well, yeah, well, get, today get, we um, you know went get, to St. John to file our papers. And uh, it's, it's it's like it's like the quad zone, Pete. To be honest with you, you know, I uh, started ten last week, and uh, you know, a beautiful clerk there, um, uh, you know, just assisted me. You know, really wanted to help. Uh, you know, brought others in and stuff like that. All smiles on their face. Really uh, adult, uh, very mature. You know, just wanting to do the right thing. And then I get to St. John today. And I go up to the third floor of uh, the um, court office uh, to file uh, first our habeas corpus. Now, as uh, listeners know, this is a very serious writ um, and uh, not to be taken lightly whatsoever. Uh, We went and we followed their guidelines for how they file their paperwork, and uh, uh, but as well staying in our common law uh, standing. With their code number, uh, you know, pertaining as to where the code was for the habeas corpus, uh, with the Judicator Act uh, that uh, was amended last year, all this kind of stuff. Um, And uh, basically brought this to the uh, lady at the desk. Uh, She was uh, one of the assistants there for the clerk's office and um, took one look at our papers and uh, uh, smiled. And I I, uh, immediately immediately asked for the uh, head clerk. Uh, because you know the, I know the routine, and uh, he wasn't in today. Of course, he wasn't. Yes, isn't that nice? So uh, they proceeded to uh, basically go from one person to another person. Uh, it was a total of uh, four ladies uh, today who looked at these papers, uh, had no idea what to do, uh, even though they were filed with their numbers, filed in their way at their court. Uh, no idea the, the, what a habeas corpus was. Now, can you imagine? Yeah, because they never see one. Hey, brother, yeah. you know, hey, this is called incompetence is us, because all they know is procedure. I, I've stated this with the lawyer, te- the lawyer craft. They don't have a freaking clue what the real law is, because this is legalism. It's procedure. It's a friggin' scam. Wake, wake up, folks. It's a scam. It's all about control mechanisms and you giving over. And uh, Brother John has stood fast in the breach. Anyways, uh, carry on, brother. So, um... Um, I noticed that uh, uh, inside the clerk's office, uh, behind their wickets, uh, was a sheriff behind me, uh, just comfortably standing and watching because he, he, he's seen me there before, uh, but no less in the office all of a sudden uh, that now that uh, uh, me and my fiance uh, Jesse, were in the office uh, discussing with these ladies, uh, as I say, very peaceful and everything else, but, uh, you know, uh, very... Um, 
distraught that they had no idea what this paperwork was, even though, like I say, their codes were on there and all this kind of stuff. And uh, uh, you know, this just conti- it, it was just it's like going to high school. You know, uh, these people they they have no idea, so then they get these attitudes with you, and you know, well, we can't follow these, and you're gonna have to come back Friday when the clerk's here, and we don't know what to do with this, and do to do. So we patiently, you know, recorded everything as usual, and proceeded up to the fourth floor where we had to file our claim. And uh, well, the clerk there, you know, uh, uh, he's a nice gentleman, name's Edward, and uh, you know, a very docile fella. But uh, you know, he's fair, and you know, he takes the, he takes the papers, and he says he'll have a judge look at them. Um, so actually, it wasn't a judge; it was a justice. Uh, that was looking at that looked at these papers, and uh, basically he said, "Yeah, I, I would take these papers." And uh, he didn't, you know, he did the correct thing like a clerk's supposed to do. He didn't rummage through the papers and look through all the read through everything like they're not supposed to. You know what I mean? They're only supposed to read the uh, cover letter and uh, see where the file, and that's it. And the rest is for the judge's eyes and part of the case. Uh, and Edward followed proper procedure. You know, looked at the cover letter, uh, recognized it, and said, "Yeah, I will have a judge look at these uh, right away." So uh, he told us to come back, and we came back about uh, two hours later, and he had our paperwork uh, waiting for us with a note from the Court of Queen's Bench of New Brunswick. Uh, and it said to the clerk uh, that uh, in response to the proposed notice of action, Arsenal plus Little versus Sue Soltz, and uh, by the way, we never put versus anybody on our paperwork. As I said, we stayed in the common law, and... Yep. Uh, you know, we didn't put verses, so he, right there, you know, first mistake. Uh, these papers seem uh, appear to relate to a matter in family division. Please ask the applicant to explain in writing any legal, legal bias for concurrent proceedings in trial division in family law in light of Section 26.9 of the Judicator Act. That paragraph discourages multiplicity of proceedings. Please return these papers to the plaintiff applicants at this time. Thank you. Uh, Hugh McLaren, a judge, and this was signed and sent back, and these papers were not accepted as well. So more runaround and more, uh, you know, convoluted, uh, uh, you know, codes and stuff like that. And if, if he would have properly gone through these papers, um, uh, I think we should post these on private so our members can see. Uh, John, would, can I just can I just make a comment? You sure can. It's it's, it's a mini rant. Um, uh, um, appear to relate to a matter appear to relate to a matter in family division um, mm. applicants legal basis concurrent proceedings <laughs> I'm sorry uh, tell me about it tell me about it uh, oh, <laughs> I'm tell me about it over here uh, please return these papers to the plaintiffs slash applicants. Yes. Are you guys plaintiffs? Are you complaining? Uh, no, I wasn't complaining. Are you applying we, 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 for anything? We, we were aggrieved, you know. <laughs> but, I mean, plaintiffs and applicants, but exactly, are you applying you know I mean? exactly. for benefits? We're not, we're not filing a complaint. Oh. We're filing a claim, exactly, which supersedes any complaint in the court uh, being, you know, there are multiple... Uh, uh, multiplicity of proceedings, but like I say, this is a separate action completely. Now, the habeas was meant to go into their complaint, right? Uh, right. As an applicant as well, right? But uh, uh, the, this one here should have been our own separate case filed. You know what I mean? And and the thing is, like uh, you guys have seen our paperwork. You know what I mean? Uh, very intelligent, articulate. Uh, we just sent Peter the latest one. If you don't one. say so yourself. If we don't say so <laughs> ourselves, exactly. But you know what I mean. And I, but I think to myself, like, how the heck is anybody going to figure this stuff out? It, like, how is anybody supposed to go to court, uh, you know, and and defend themselves without turning all their power over to a lawyer and all this kind of stuff? It's, well, that's and, it. And and, and you in, know, in the, in the letter that this judge writes to you, he says, um, in family division, in light of what is it, section twenty six nine of the Judicator Act, Judic- yeah. Judicator Act. Do you know about this? I mean, and why does he sign well, it well, a exa- judge? Yeah. Like what? Yeah. This is the role I'm playing today. I'm not um, the policeman or you know the plumber today. I am a judge. A judge, I, yeah. That just can just you know take a claim and and look at it for an hour and a half and just no, 
You know what I mean? <laughs> like, but it's very, it's very well measured, isn't it? His mm. letter. He's, he's. Uh, they appear. These papers appear to relate to a matter in family division. Uh, appear, in words, but it does. He's not. He's not substance. voting one way or another. No, no. He kept I don't it, know. He, he I don't know. Very open. Exactly. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. Come back uh, on this uh, act here and you know what i mean uh just like i say more more hoops to jump through uh more and then, things and then he says please ask the applicants to explain in writing any legal basis for concurrent proceedings in trial division and in family division in light of section 269 of the judicator act uh, so he basically wants for you to come and play in their system like you're a lawyer and you know all exactly, this garbage exactly exactly and, and you're not applicants and exactly. uh, why why is he asking you to explain in writing any legal basis? And right, because you're not a lawyer. You it's can't not, explain legalism. Yeah, and how, how about legal versus lawful? Exactly. You know, we we don't want to be dealing with their legal system because their legal system basically kidnapped your children. Exactly. You know? And the whole point of your filing your uh, maybe explain why you file your 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 filing your habeas corpus. Well, the habeas corpus is basically bring forth the body, um, and it, it is uh, basically a common law writ, uh, basically making them bring forth a proper claim, bringing, bringing forth that they have a superior claim to me, uh, of, to my flesh and blood property. You know, okay, and so it is in other property. Words, explain, it is property give me in common proof. law. What's in that? other words, give me proof why you kidnapped my children. Exactly. Okay. With no charges. Like, like I say, we've not been charged with anything other than uh, the police coming here and then taking uh, the rifle and the five grams of marijuana. You know what I mean? Like, uh, but from CPS, we've been charged with nothing. You know what I mean? This is this is the the craziness about it. They're sitting here, going on four months now, poisoning our children with all oh, God knows what kind of stuff. Because these people that have our children are, you know. Uh, just absolute sights to be seen. You know, I, I don't judge people how they take care of themselves, but if you're going to take care of uh, the public's children and stuff like that, and you're you're supposed to be responsible for children and stuff, you should have uh, you know a little a bit of information on nutrition. You know, hmm. and these people, you know, we're talking like one of these ladies has got to be 300 pounds if, if she's a pound. You know, and just you know exactly, oh, and, and just. And they've got my my infant now. You know he's he can't he can barely breathe now. You know what I mean? He's so overweight now and stuff like this. And this is what a healthy baby's supposed to be. You know, uh, you know, just raspy and everything. They they haven't let us see the children now for uh, it's going on what uh, two and a half weeks now, three weeks. Uh, we haven't seen any of the children uh, because oh. uh, um, you know they want to they want to discuss more allegations. And we're like, well, mm -hmm. if there's allegations and you have proof, then charge us. You know what I mean? Yeah. Four months later, now there's allegations all of a sudden because we won't bow down. We won't, and you know, we've got them on recording, lying on their affidavits, lying on like so much information, saying that they didn't think that the kids were in danger and all this kind of stuff, and you know, just uh, saying that they they they've uh, you know. Uh, Judge us because of our beliefs and who we are and the the organization we're in and all this kind of stuff. This is all on recording. Like it's just just you know burying themselves completely. So it, it's it's no wonder we can't get any any uh, justice in their courts. And it's going to have to be you know higher courts. And I can see this going probably to the Supreme Court of Canada. Um, yeah, but there right, is no but isn't justice. that another dead man's court, John? Well, you know what I mean. The Supreme Court of Canada, you know, it is it is the common law court. Uh, you know, it is it is the court that that these guys do bring down the hammer on these judges. Uh, that judge that signed this paper today, he uh, got uh, something overturned by him uh, not too long ago because uh, he had no right to do what he did. So this is not his his first time, you know, uh, uh, you know, practicing law from the bench, I guess you could say, you know. Uh, so here we are. The struggle continues, and we yet stay in peace and honor. And uh, yeah. You know, hey, I've got a I've got a question, John. Um, yeah. Uh, I I think in the United States the I think it's the, called the sheriff. Um, apparently, the sheriff uh, is the highest authority, mm -hmm. um, uh, like below someone who knows who they are. Yeah. Ooh, and and, and they're supposed to, they're supposed to be you know uh, 
not mingling kind of thing with the court like they do. And these guys just mingle and talk all day long. You yeah, because they're all bought and paid yeah, for exactly. by like the it, whores of beef. It doesn't work like you think. Like I say, these guys are all criminals. Like they just do what they're going to do, and what are we going to do about it? You know? Bad actors in a uniform, no different than your neighbor from across the street telling yeah. you you've got to do your windows or you're mm. going to write you up. Exactly. Right. Uh, yeah, you know, they, now, but but I go into Fredericton, and it's like, oh, yeah, we'll file this right away for you. This is great. Yeah, I could give you a court case right now if you're in our jurisdiction. Oh, well, here, let me show you how to get these and file these so that they'll take them. There should be no reason why they don't take these papers now. And, you know, so, like... So let me understand the difference. Um, in Fredericton, uh, you were you were well-received, and in yeah. St. John, this what was the difference? Uh, it's why, John, why it's, it's, it's like it's like they took people off the street and said you can be uh, assistant to the court clerk today, oh, like, or you can be a judge. A judge. yeah, like it's just okay. yeah, like it, it seems like that. And then you go to Fredericton and it's like night and day. It's like oh yeah, well I understand exactly what your habeas corpus is. Oh I understand exactly what you're doing with the common law. And, oh, oh that's great. Yeah, do do do. Oh this is how you have to file it and do do do. And okay, I understand you want to stay in common law and do do. You know, it's uh, such a different atmosphere. You know, even brought in his uh, 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 regional director, you know, with our next meeting to come in. And she was all smiles and very interested and looking through the papers, you know what I mean? And, oh, yeah, these are great. These are very articulate, you know, and there should be no reason. But you do have to put it in our format just so that they will take them. They know how to file them. and But you can leave everything else the same, you know. And uh, John, we, yeah. got, we got any names? I, wanna, I got my flashlight out. I want some names, some names tonight. You want to some names, eh? Yeah. <laughs> hey, let's name names. It's all good. Uh, well, know, where, do you, um, where do you want to start from? Do you want to start with the first judges who, you know, the denied our living benefits? Or you want to start with the people who stole our children from our home, uh, you know, that, that continue? They're the worst, right? These are the ones that uh, just completely took our kids away. Uh uh, Lynn Otis, this is one of the ladies that came into our home. Hey, Lynn, how you doing? This is a shout-out to you from down on Glade Spring. I ain't in nothing, so get we your mind right. Tracy Hookie, mm. uh, she's another one who just come in. Hey, Tracy. Two that came to our house and took our children out. Uh, their supervisor is Pam, uh, Pam Cole. Hi, Pam. Hi, Pam Cole. Hey, this is a shout-out from you from uh, And the uh, Minister of uh, Social Services who uh, filed this application without ever meeting our children or ever discussing anything with us or ever having oh, so any He made contract. a legal determination on his right. own Her free will and volition. Is Minister of Social Services Sue Stoltz. Hey, Sue, what's up? Yeah, yeah I love all you nefarious types up there. Yeah. Mm. Well, that, that that's where it begins, and then we've got judges. Uh, we've got uh, Bruce A. Noble. That uh, was the first guy who kicked us out of the courtroom the first time when we went in there. And hey, hey, brother, hey, brother, hey, brother. Wait a minute, hold on. Before you go on, I love that. Bruce A. Noble, B-A-N, ban. You're banned, brother. Uh, you're banned from my world, anyways. Uh, B-A-N, that's uh, the acronym for banned. You are now banned. It's, i got to love it. Uh, yeah, sort of like peg, you know, I'm square yeah. banging around the hole. Mm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so you know the the list continues that uh, just <laughs> we've got the uh, prosecutor uh David R Colwell uh this is the prosecutor who we've sent many notice of precipitates notice uh uh, to settle the account and uh, to let them know our status. And uh, we sent them the, our UCC, our documentation of status change, our living beneficiary uh, status, uh, wills and testaments for all the kids, final orders, you know, the works. Uh, yep. These guys are, have signed for everything, registered mail. Like, I, I just... <laughs> yeah, hey, 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 brother, it's their job to ignore anything because uh, that's all they know how to do because they don't have a soul. They are void. They are defunct. Um, you know, uh, it's all good, brother. Uh, see, uh, that's what happens when you sell your soul for lucre, and that's all they do. And that's all right because, see, the machine eats its own, and it will. And it's all on the wheel. What goes around comes around. I promise. Um, they're oh, gonna let have me, the let me give you another, another one more name, too, because I want to get this out there. Um, okay, before break, because we're going to break here okay. in a minute. Our friend uh, uh, Thomas Bischoff, the clerk on the third floor, uh, let's not get mixed up with the fourth floor, he was a very nice gentleman, uh, the gentleman who uh, said he was going to uh, shred our papers, uh, the gentleman who wouldn't take any of our evidence into our, our trial uh, before we knew better, uh, you know, uh, uh, who basically says, uh, I'm waiting to be charged and all this kind of stuff, very cocky attitude, uh, and we've since filed breaches uh, with him for breach of trust. And he's yep. been notified at his office. So I'd like to take a shuttle to uh, Thomas Bishop, too. 
Hey, Thomas, how you doing, brother? Thomas Bishop, hey, shout out. We love you. Hey, uh, Fourth all floor, good. third floor, mm. St. John, New Brunswick. Well, uh, St. John's in New Brunswick. Hey, we just want to make sure we uh, identify all the um, the usual suspects, because that's what they call us. Anyways, yeah, exactly. Uh, well, hey, you know what, brother? It's 729. I'm going to go to a break. Uh, we'll, we'll we'll keep this train going, because yeah, wait till I get to the other side of this show, because it's really going to get fun. Because I'm really, really feeling froggy. And uh, poor Michelle didn't know what I meant by froggy. It wasn't a, a French thing. Uh, froggy means I'm ready to I'm ready to jump, and that's all that means. Anyways, uh, yeah, if you were here for the first half hour, you uh, you missed some love. Anyways, um, yeah, we're gonna be moving forward and sharing the love uh, on the other side of the house. Uh, I guess John, you know, when you assess all this crap, uh, uh, you know what they call us the terrorists. Uh, the only terrorists are the ones who are enforcing the terroristic acts. Uh, the bad actors in badges, guns. Um, who are corporate whores uh, upholding a false paradigm cause to enforce against my brothers. As a matter of fact, uh, yeah, Canada is doing an excellent job at ticketing my little brother, younger brothers and sisters for loitering all over the place. So some love out for the RMCP or whatever the hell you call your clown asses. RCMP. I don't know. Yeah, RCMP, yeah. Yeah, you yeah, yeah, bunch of crooks, a uh, bunch of crooks. Hey, you know what, you're... You're going to be next. Hey, I promise. It's all on the wheel. What goes around comes around. You think you're enforcing for Caesar, and Caesar's going to eat your lunch because when your useful purpose is up, they're going to take care of you too. Anyway, so you think you're doing a good deed, but they will know them by their bad acts and deeds, and it is all on the wheel. So go look in the mirror and get your mind right because it's coming Um, because my brothers and sisters are waking up en masse, Australia, Canada, U.K., uh, Germany, West Germany, uh, all these IMF-run whore bait com- uh, countries, your days are numbered. It's not me saying it. That's all your brothers and sisters saying it because we got your memo. Anyways, um, folks, this is, uh, this is what I try to share. I get really excited because, see, you know, uh, we're all supposed to have love in our hearts and come to each other and share and whatever, but when you enforce bad acts under the guise of a banana eating on Tuesdays and Thursdays because they create bullcrap laws for everything, uh, folks, if you if you haven't got the memo, I mean, hell, they got uh, it's called motoring in Colorado, where you uh, go start your car up in your own driveway, and because you're not uh, attached to the car while it's warming up while you're getting your cup of coffee, they give you a $300 ticket in your own driveway. That's how the whores have become uh, incestuously uh, revenue generation. Matter of fact, hey, I got an article in New York. Uh, New York, a couple of um, uh, ones that actually had moral compasses and uh, souls uh, who are actually bringing forward. Uh, that they were told to meet quotas. Gee, go figure, quotas. Yeah, in Connecticut, mm-hmm. they're real good. Hey, I'm, I'm going to out all the son of a bitches because it's time. Uh, yeah, can, up in uh, can, uh, the, the, the Constitution State, they call it the Consti- I call it the rape and pillage state because that's all they do up there, and they're taking their guns away from them up there. So, folks, hey, you know what? Are you next? Hey, when do you draw a line in the sand? So the point I'm trying to make uh, up in uh, Connecticut, though, the, uh, they got their boss, their, the HMFIC, and I won't tell you what that vernacular means, but it's not good. Um, he's giving uh, kudos to his his uh, state troopers to, we need to get more revenue. So who, he who gets the most tickets gets a free pizza. Well, gee, I think I, uh, that's, that's really special. Well, hey, who can, he who can make the most victims today gets a free pizza. Boy, that's, that's people with real moral fiber. Yeah, I hope they choke on the damn pizza. Anyways, uh, folks, this is what's going on in your world. You better wake up. I mean, it's gotten really ugly, and it's gotten ugly quick. I'm not about fear. I'm about the truth, and that's, that's what we're bringing here. Uh, wait till I start talking about the my brothers at the IRS a little bit. Uh, I'm going to share with you. That's why I say I, I posted that video, uh, Freedom to Fascism. Please go watch it, folks. Get your minds right, because um, if you don't open up your eyes pretty soon, your vessel will be compromised, plundered, pillaged, raped, because you're part of the citizenship. Go figure. See, because when you gave over and you signed up uh, for the body politic, you became one of their corporate whores, a... Mm, what do they call that? Somebody receiving benefits and privileges. You're a dead entity. You have no capacity. You have no substance as a man. They converted you to a corporation. The minute you file a 1040, your first time, they sucked you into the game, stuck you in the loop, and now you're part of the meat grinder. However, um, because we love our brothers on the other side of the fence, Brother Michael and I are going to do some heavy lifting for all our brothers and sisters. Because, folks, it's just a matter of rescission of signature. See, you gave over. But you can, re- you can remove that presumption. You can rescind the signatures on all 1040s, past, present, and future. Don't do any more 1040s. Just rescind your signature. Because, see, uh, if you don't, 
then they think you're happy with what you gave over because you basically they consider everything registered property, abandoned property, and they own you. But that's all right. You can remove the presumption, and that's what we're going to teach over at our classes over at privatist.me. So if you haven't got the memo on coming over, come on over because uh, we're, we're just getting warmed up because we love the paper terrorism that they're doing upon my brothers and sisters. And that's all it is, folks, paper terrorism. They, um, and they know very well what they're doing. They know exactly what they're doing. That's called the control mechanism. That's called paper terrorism. Yeah, you, uh, anyways, yeah, we don't lean, levy anybody. We don't go in war. We go in peace, folks. We're gonna, they, they just want you to share with them and help them remove the presumption. So that's what we're going to do. That. That's what we're going to share with you how to do on all your past 1040s that you got duped into filling out in the first place because you didn't know no better because they failed to tell you that W-2s, W-4s, and 1099s weren't income tax forms. Those are estate and gift tax forms, and they had to find a way to tax the estate. I keep talking about the estate, and it's all about the estate. Well, hey, it's good to be a living beneficiary, not a dead entity. So we teach stuff like that. Anyways, um, I'm ranting. Hello. I forgot to take my medication today, <laughs> folks, and I am ranting. I'm in rare form. John, what do you think? I'm loving it, Pete. I love your rants. That's why we love your show. <laughs> yeah, I, and I'm sure that tonight that they're going to love my show. Yeah, i got uh, I got to give a shout-out to a brother up in Canada who um, I'm hoping um, I can get him on Saturday uh, and share the love um, uh, about the CRA and uh, the nefarious acts that they're committing against their brothers and sisters because, hey, folks, it's the same bird of the same feather. It's the same whore. Uh, incestuously tapping into the estates of my brothers and sisters in your country as well. So, um, hey, Saturday's going to probably be a really, really interesting show. Um, anyways, uh, on that note, um, hmm, I don't even know what to say now. I, I'm at a loss of words. <laughs> anyways, we, I, guess it comes, yeah. I guess it comes down to consent. Huh, Michelle, let's talk about consent, how everybody keeps giving over. Hmm. Yeah, and we were discussing earlier um, the difference between uh, belief and knowing and how we give over in believing. We give over in accepting a system that is called a belief uh, rather than knowing something for ourselves. The difference is truth um, Truth. Truth has no teaching. It 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 just is. Uh, it, it it's not a it, it's not a pursuit. Uh, it's not something that you can um, pray for or ask for or hope for. It's there. Um, for me, it seems like awakening, and and I speak of awakening. Sure, yeah, in the you know spiritual way, but also. Um, in in the world way of of what's actually going on and uh, the various systems that we're um, being controlled by A- awakening it's it's not it, it doesn't come from willing it you can't and I think Peter this is why I called you that first time uh, over a month and a half ago because you were on a beautiful rant. And I was calling you up just to say, hey, not everyone's going to get it. Not everyone um, is going to understand what you're saying. It's it's way too out there. You're shattering their paradigms, and most people love their beliefs. Um, the thing with a belief system is it has to be buttressed up. It has to be reinforced and... Um, it, it, it's like a re-entry circuit of energy. Uh, let, let's look at, um, I guess, religion, which is basically state-sanctioned mind control. Uh, people, people have to participate in it. They have to believe in it. There are buildings where you go, um, you know, uh, to give mosques, over your power. Sure, and uh, the temples and uh, churches and these places. You you have to go there, so there's an action. So you have consent there, and there's ritual involved. Uh, okay, kneel, do this, bow down, uh, genuflect, do this, say this. I Don't say do this. Don't do that. Uh, the get you the signs here. Signs, signs everywhere. Signs. <laughs> you know, here we go. Anyway, say hey, yes. Exactly. We are. I'm gonna. I, I do need to interrupt your flow just go for ahead. a second because I got to share the love on the religious side. So nobody thinks we're just taking a pot shot, folks. 
Do you understand what a 5013C is? If you don't, um, there's a uh, – I, I can't even remember the name of the site. I'll, I'll, I'll pull it up. I, I want to share the love with my brothers and sisters who are stuck in the religious paradigm and buying off on their false ideology. Folks, every church has, since 1933 pretty much has given over as a 5013C. Well, guess what? That's a, a subservient position to the state to tax the estate. So they've um, – They've duped the pastors into buying off on this false paradigm. And every pastor I've encountered over the last 12 years, and folks, I'm not the shy, quiet type. Hard to believe, I know. Uh, I'm working on coming out of my shell. Um, <laughs> I'm a shell. <laughs> Anyways, um, every pastor I've encountered over 12 years, I've broached the issues of the 5013 CC because every, it, there, it's called separation of church and state for a reason. Matter of fact, in the state on Virginia, um, there was laws in place uh, that uh, didn't allow a church to diverse over to a 5013C status because it was not subservient to the dictates of the state. But now you got all these uh, 5013Cs subscribing to the voting of this vote for this one. My pastor was just as ignorant, and but, and I share with him a nice, uh, very very well put together um, overview on 5013Cs and how they've given over, laid over, bent over and giving up their brother for lucre um, because it's all tied into the corporate structure and you are mm-hmm. asking for permission for Caesar for the right to, be free, the right to be free when you're free already and unencumbered to start. But because you signed a contract and gave over, you brought your church and everybody under it under the guise of freedom. Uh, it's another scam. It's a shakeshifter uh, scam, and you've been, they've all been duped. And so all my brothers and sisters... Yeah, you're, they're tracking your taxes for your gifts and so you can get your tax right off. Well, that's another benefit or privilege, mm-hmm. and that's going to bind you up, and that's what does bind you up. See, but they don't talk about this in school. They don't teach this anywhere. You've got to actually go dig, and that's what I've done. That's what I've done for 25 years. So this 5013C, if your church, matter of fact, you can check your roles and see if it's an incorporated church under 5013C. If it is, guess what? You're not free and unencumbered. You're, bo- you're bending over for... The Caesar's Law, uh, your church has given over. Matter of fact, I know a pastor from South Florida, um, Pensacola of all places, who had a 5,000-plus membership church down there in Pensacola, and this, this one actually had a conviction of soul, removed himself from his pastor seat, and started anew up, in another, up, up north, um, I think in North Dakota or something, um, and he is not a 5013C. He didn't subscribe to the game because he knew that he had stepped over the line by being binded up by a 5013C, and he couldn't really talk truth. See, because th- that's the dictates of the church. We don't really talk truth. We just talk generalizations, uh, the, um, information, just to keep the sheep passive, to give over their power to some guy on a pulpit. Hey, you know what, folks? Guess what? You know where all the power is? It's in you but you keep giving it to everybody else. See, that's called consent, Mm -hmm. and you're being governed by consent. But the propaganda machine has done an excellent job of getting us all duped, and I know this is probably offending a boatload of people. Oh, well, you know what? I look to me. I don't look to somebody outside of me to put down dictates and tell me what I'm supposed to think, how I'm supposed to think, what I'm supposed to eat, what I'm supposed to drink. Kiss my rosy red butt. Um, I don't subscribe to anybody... Um, putting out dictates. Uh, you don't need them either, folks, but apparently they programmed you enough to, um, hey, folks, and I did 10 years in the military. I know a little bit about being dictated to. Mm, Go figure. Mm-hmm. But uh, you know what? Even there, I was a square peg in the round hole. I used to drive my colonels crazy. That was my job because I think outside the box, I always have, and I'm a scary proposition. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, uh, I just thought I'd enlighten people on the 5013C if they don't understand it. Um, uh, well, the, how it binds the church up, uh, go look it up, folks. Um, it's a structure. It's a structure within a structure, and it's just another false paradigm we've been fed. Yeah, I know it's feel-good bull crap they feed us, uh, but you know what? They get us to quit thinking for ourselves. That's the objective. That's the propaganda machine, and that's what the whole system is. It's the system of downs, and we've all gone to sleep in our minds and forgot to think for ourselves. Anyways, Michelle, I'll shut up now. Hmm. <laughs> so, you mean like state-sanctioned mind control? Yeah, that's I don't all want it to is. get you started again. <laughs> nah, it's all good. Eh? It's state-sanctioned for the people who subscribe to it, but uh, I, I've, I've mm. been outside that box for a while. Mm. 
Yeah, but we're coming back to this, uh, you know, belief uh, and and truth. Uh, you know, awakening. Awakening is the way I see it. And again, maybe I should do my my preface. This is all my opinion. Okay. Yep. <laughs> it's it's not a debate or anything. It's just my opinion. It's how I see things. Everyone has their opinion. Um, but for me, it seems like uh, waking up is um, removing your beliefs. Yep. And it's 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 kind of like this 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 desperate act uh, that that you get pulled along. You get pulled along, and you start seeing things completely differently. And it's like you go through this personal apocalypse. Um, and you can make it easy, or you can. I mean, this is kind of mafia. We can make this easy for you, or you you can make it tough for yourself. Um, and those people who are uh, most invested in their beliefs are the ones who will have the most difficult time in in letting go of them. Um, you know, it's it's that. Uh, naked and crying on the bathroom floor thing where you know life has taken you to a certain spot and uh you just don't it, like it's just not lining up um that's the beginning that's just the beginning <laughs> well hey uh it's beautiful um uh, i'm being skyped by somebody from uh a friend from california who i consider a friend and I just mm-hmm. asked her uh, because she's uh, not not real happy with what you're saying, Michelle. And you That's know, fine. I like I like a little controversy. I'm not afraid of that. Um, um, I just asked her if she goes to a 501c3 church, and if she does, she's been duped as well, just like the rest of the masses, folks. Mm-hmm. They don't want you to think outside the box. Um, uh, we're not talking about humaniz- and spiritualism you, you and humanism tell, and all this other stuff. And tell- she's missing the boat. Peter, you can tell your friend, or I, I guess she's listening. Um, it's it's not a debate. This is where I've come along in in on my personal path. Um, for me, uh, a belief system is something that must be reinforced by people uh, over time through ritual and awareness and um, energetic focus. Whereas knowing doesn't require reinforcement at all. It is. Exactly. It stands yep. alone. Well, it was like and, the re- right. It's like the reinforcement of Catholic uh, Catholicism, and I'm not putting it down. I'm just saying a fact. Uh, genuflecting, going to a man in a box for my so-called absolution doesn't fit my paradigm. I don't need a middleman for me, and my Creator. Uh, never did, never will. Didn't subscribe. Got um, the what do you call um, when they throw you out? Um, excommunicated. Excommunicated. That's how they answer your questions, folks. I asked all mm-hmm. the right questions. You know, I got, I was a blasphemer, and I got thrown out. So is that love? Is there love throwing a man out uh, or a, a young guy out of uh, who's asking concerted questions that require really a concerted answer? But instead of giving the answer, we excommunicate you because you're, we consider you a blasphemer because you, how dare you question authority? Here we go. But, but Peter, mm. your, your excommunication was your answer. Yeah, that was my answer. It was a beautiful answer, and I was, I hey, I subscribed to that paradigm right out of the box. I said, you gave me what I needed to know so that I could move forward. I thank you very much. I'm no longer under the control mechanisms of Catholicism. But you knew that already because it's it's what led you to ask the questions. Yep. You and everybody's afraid to ask questions. Already. Yeah, everybody's afraid yeah. to ask questions. You know why? Because they're not going to like the answers. Can I tell you what I've learned? Uh, sure. My, my spiritual quest. Um uh, I grew up uh, Catholic um, and uh, went to, uh, well, I can't say I grew up Catholic. It's not like my parents ever went to church and all that kind of I was baptized Catholic, let's just say that. And my parents forced me to go to Sunday school <laughs> until I was about 10 years old or whatever, mm. 12 years old. And uh, uh, my father is a very devout uh, religious fellow. You know, he believes in God. Uh, and uh you know I was always preaching you know have faith and all that kind of stuff and uh mm-hmm. uh what that instilled in me he he wanted me to actually be a pastor and so wow. uh mr uh i i love knowledge you know i read um uh, all the religious books i could get my hands on and uh, studied them and everything else and um you know, I was angry at times and uh, didn't understand it. And, uh, you know, uh, I'm going to say two things. 
One, the Bible is a magical book if you know how to read it. Two, the churches are the most evil things on the planet, and they've completely corrupted what the Bible was saying uh, to take all your power away from you. Um, a good fella, if you guys really want to uh, decode the Bible, a uh, really good, lovely fella has been doing this for years, is uh, Bill Donahue. You can find him on YouTube under Hidden Meanings. And he basically goes through every chapter of the book and brings out all the old uh, knowledge uh, that is actually hidden. People are, are reading the the book like a child reads a, a book, you know what I mean, taking it literally and all this kind of stuff. And when you really understand what's going on, uh, it has nothing to do with what was being taught in churches whatsoever. This guy was a pastor for 30 years and um, uh, basically studied, you know, all the religions around the world and all this kind of stuff and, and basically found out that they were all saying the same thing. And it, it wasn't what people are literally reading. Um, it is absolutely incredible. It's almost a manual to uh, what we are and what this is. And it has nothing to do with a man in the sky judging you and all this kind of stuff. There's a lot of history in the Bible that's been ma manipulated and turned around and all this kind of stuff. But the core... Uh, 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 lessons uh, or metaphors are in there, but you do need to be able to understand them at a scholarly level. So if people are interested and they want to, you know, um, not I, I, like I said, I wouldn't discount the Bible uh, at all. It's an absolutely magical book, but it is being completely manipulated to a point of absolute opposite of what it's really trying to uh, free you. And it is all about empowering yourself and knowing that you are the one and that you are the creation of all that is. Um, and how to get there in your mortal form. So, yep. yeah, that's what I've learned. Mm. Anyways, uh, yeah, you know, I knew I was going to rub some feathers, but, hey, what the hell, in for a penny, in for a pound. <laughs> I ain't afraid of no ghosts. You know what, hey, if it pisses you off, you better take a look at it. That's the point. You know what? Mm, See, so apparently I offended somebody's it. belief system, and it's another false belief. Like I say, if you're a 5013C church, you better get your mind right because your pastor subscribed to the false paradigm. Not you, but you gave over by being a, a good member, of upstanding member. And I know there's damn good people in the church. I'm not putting down people. What I'm saying is the sheep have been led, to str led astray, and there's going to be false prophets everywhere, and they are everywhere. And, hey, folks, if you haven't gone and watched Changes on the Horizon to get your mind right and how this all went down, uh, it really, really does give an over. You're talking about 1933 and all the churches got binded up into the game and come and brought their flocks forward for the fleecing. And, folks, it's getting um, really, really interesting out there. So, uh, matter of fact, uh, yeah, you've got uh, DHS and stuff like that getting pastors to give over their roles and stuff like that and anybody they consider subversive. you got the police state and churches, folks. Come on, snap out of it. It's happening all over you're probably just not paying attention. Anyways, um, mm -hmm. we're going to go all things IRS uh, after the top of the hour. We're fixing to go to a break, um, and I want to go into all things IRS um, after the top of the hour, sir, because uh, I know a lot of people stay tuned because that's what we were uh, slated to talk about, and I'm going to give some direction of flow. Now we're going uh, to get down to some meat and potatoes. We're going to have some fun. Uh, and I'm going to share with you, hey, uh, there's nothing up for debate here, folks. It's all about truth. So, if you're willing to come to my house, I'm going to show you the truth with both barrels. Can you handle the truth like Jack Nicholson says? Maybe, maybe not. Um, but I'll give you direction of flow. I will give you irrevocable proof on multiple levels if you're willing to open your eyes. Uh, and, uh, this is where we live. This is where I live. Uh, folks, uh, if you like paper terrorism, stand fast, do nothing. There will be a whole lot more coming your way. They'll be glad. Mm -hmm. But if you're looking for a solution to the problem, it's how you go to peace and settle the account uh, and just move forward because when you give over into statutory land and you, uh, you just become a hypothecation event, and that's all it's all about. I've got irrevocable proof over on the site. I do a beautiful bond show I did, uh, the very first show when I first started, Private is Not Me. It's two hours of me beating, uh, making your ears bleed, but I'm going to give you direction of flow. I'm going to give you document numbers, information, all attachments, See, because I'm the show-and-tell guy. I love to do show-and-tell because that's where I live. I'm a pitcher word association. It's like five-year-old, um, you know, because other, otherwise it becomes, like I say, hearsay. I don't give hearsay. Uh, I can give you manual numbers. I can give you everything. Um, 
like a 6207 uh, manual where I uncovered um, and I shared the love with the Treasury Inspector General up there at uh, D.C., District of, Crim- uh, D- uh, District of Criminals, and ironically, they pulled 6207 out of the code uh, thereafter, uh, 30 days after I had wrote him a beautiful love letter about W-2s, W-4s, 1099s being all state gift taxes. Folks, let me share some love with you. I'm going to give you some specificity now. Um, I'm on my rant. Uh, everybody just stand back, uh, have their big cup, and just relax, because I'm going to go for a minute. Uh, I'm going to give you some verifiable proofs. It's all posted uh, for everybody to see, for the world to see, if they're willing to open their eyes. Uh, but you've got to come through the door. You've got to um, open and take them rose-colored glasses off. And if you're not willing to, you just stand fast, and I promise they'll take care of you. Um, anyways, uh, the point in being is, folks, the minute you uh, did your first 1040, you came into mammon. You gave over because somebody told you, some liar, some crook, some thief who is enforcing the scam, who, the propaganda machine, and they actually teach these forms in school. Uh, i got a sister-in-law. She's a CPA, and we had some dialogue about these uh, W-2s, W-4s, 1099s. I said, hey, uh, uh, if you're a, are you a betting woman? She's college educated. I figured she was pretty smart. So I asked her straight up. I said, hey, um, were you aware that uh, W-2s, W-4s, and 1099s are not income tax forms at all? Oh, yes, they are. And I says, uh, where's your point of reference? Can you give me some sustaining documentation? And she didn't see, well, it's just, that's the way it is. See, there you go, folks. A false belief system that was uh, hypothecated in her freaking mind because that's what the public fool system and the um, colleges taught her. Um, yeah, that, hey, they got, I, hey, I'm getting posted over at Yale, folks. Uh, I, even my smart brothers, they even started to get the memo. Um, but let's go with this for a second. So I said, uh, are you a betting woman? And I said, and she was just looking at me. My brother-in-law, he's college educated too. He's looking over at me, uh, giving me a little smile, like a smirk, like what the hell does Peter know that I don't? So I went to my, I went to my computer and I printed off the 10 pages of 6207 under forms and codes um, under the classifications of these documents, uh, 1040s, W-2s, W-4s, 1099s. And I highlighted all the stuff for brevity, for simplicity, so she could follow the bouncing ball. I highlighted everything that fell under W-2s, uh, W-4s, and 1099s. Gee, they all fell under what's called a tax class 5. Uh, folks, a tax class 5, uh, and I have, the, I have the manual, just in case anybody wants it, I'll go ahead and post it at the site so everybody can pull it up and see for themselves. It's in section 2.1. Um, so you can you know, know that Peter's not making this up. If you want to be from the show me state, come to my house, and I'll show you. And um, anyways, I posted and highlighted all that for her. I said, now tell me, on the top of this document, what is the reference number for W, uh, what the W-2s, W-4s, and 1099s? What's the classification code? She goes, it's all five. I says, what is five? She goes, estate and gift tax. Gee, go figure, folks. I've been saying from the beginning, it's all about the estate. And now I got verifiable proof. I covered this uh, 12 years ago, found this out, and... um, this gave me my epiphany moment, knowing it's all about the estate. It's all about the trust. They think you didn't want it. So guess what? They're stealing your beneficial interest because you gave over via registration on everything you've done. So I'm going to go, folks, I'm going somewhere. Uh, I'm going to give you a solution. There are solutions, but you've got to be willing to um, pull the glasses off and come over to my house and find out what the solutions are. Matter of fact, I'm going to do a YouTube video uh, especially on how to exactly, to exact, um, to rescind or remove the presumption of your 1040s that you got lied to filling out your entire life. So you can, until, but until you remove that presumption, they think you're fat, happy, and stupid uh, with uh, everything the way it's gone. But until you remove the presumption, just like on your body politic is uh, on the voter rolls, because if you haven't read uh, Slave Owner Who Owns You, uh, which I have a document which you can read for yourself, You've given over your beneficial interest over to them. You gave them your power, and you are unaware. See, they don't teach this in school, folks. They don't teach none of this in school. But anyways, back to um, W-2s, W-4s, and 1099s. They are state and gift tax forms. But um, what happens is, folks, is once you move forward, because somebody duped you, i.e. lied to you, gave their, uh, their world view, skewed view, uh, world according to garb, and had you fill out a 1040 because they said that's the required form, yeah, it's the required form for slaves for corporate entities, franchisees, um, a corporation. You are a dead entity. That's who you gave over the classification when you signed the bottom of the document, unencumbered, 
with your full willy-nilly signature. You gave them your res. It's called your energy, R-E-S. That's your energy. You gave over, and you confirmed the deal, and you signed it under the penalties of perjury that you didn't want it, and you gave over to them. That's why they keep beating your damn brakes off, because you never removed the presumption, because you didn't know that you were buying it up through the falsity of filling out that sorry-ass form in the first place. But I'm going to take you on a little deeper uh, ride here before we get moving. You're going to like this, folks. Because I got irrevocable proof on that. You, hey, if, if anybody has ever been to familyguardian.org, that's F A M I L Y Guardian, G U A R D I A N dot org. I guess I'll post that on one of my deals too. Um, folks, um, that's where I, I started digging in about uh, 12 years ago. And guess what happens when you fill out a 1040? They go into the system of records and they twist and they change your status. You're, they, see, folks, when we talk about status over at my house and how to change your status, they don't want you to change your status because they're looking for a good compliance slave that they can steal the res off and hypothecate until your butt falls off. That's why this system has gone on for your entire life. Nobody gave you the memo. Well, I'm going to give you the memo. So here we go. Anyways, uh, once they put you into the system of downs, they twist it. And by the way, folks, they classify you under 27 CFR, um, which is um, alcohol, tobacco, and firearms. I have documentary proof of a friend of mine who's over in Maryland who got a FOIA request on all her documents proving that they had her as a gun runner. Uh, gee, go figure. They're taxing you under alcohol, tobacco, and firearms. So when they twist you in the codes when you fill out that first 1040, they make you a tax class 2, which guess what that is? A franchisee corporate entity for a taxable event to use Caesar's uh, FRNs. Gee, uh, so everything you do is considered a taxable event. But, see, they don't teach this in uh, college. They don't teach this in high school. They don't teach this in grade school. They don't teach you how to be free. They don't teach you how not to give over. They don't teach you how not to consent. They teach you exactly the opposite. That's called programming, brothers and sisters, programming to the extreme. And we've all bought the paradigm shift, uh, that lie. So if you want to change it, you're going to get to come over to my house, uh, privatist.me, and come and get your mind right if you're ready. If you're not, stand fast because you'll go down the road, but you won't be any more knowledgeable. See, I, I'm an educator. and but, but why I set up privatist.me, folks, because it is private. It stays private. Sort of like what is in Vegas stays in Vegas. Well, that's at, what's at privatist.me stays in privatist.me. Because, see, you have to take a physical action to come into my house. And if you fail to take that physical action, you're still operating in the public. This is why I can't post this stuff in the public, and I won't. Because then I would be warring, and I'm not warring. So I'm going to share the love for those that want to be educated. See, they're hoping you don't want to be educated. They're hoping you don't want to find out the truth. They're hoping you'll go back to sleep in dead man's land, become zombified, stupefied, do your job, run to work, come back, turn on the idiot box, go into stupefied land, and uh, veg out, drink your beers, drink your alcohol, take your pills, do whatever, desensitize yourself, decompress yourself, whatever, how, whatever it does to help you get your mind right so that you can deal with the pain. Well, if you don't like the pain... You're going to have to change. And guess what? Uh, when the pain becomes so great and there's nothing left to do, that's when you're going to make the change. And that's why I made my change, folks, because I had nothing else to lose. When you got nothing else to lose, it's really easy to move forward in a whole different uh, level because I've got nothing they can steal, nothing. Um, that's a beautiful thing. And that's uh, what they don't want you to know. That's what they don't want you to think about. But, uh, you know, you can wait till you lose it all, and then you'll be ready at that time for your shift. But you don't have to wait uh, till you lose it all before you get the shift. But you own nothing. But you can change this paradigm. You can change the outcome. Um, anyways, um, but it all starts with us. It all starts with thinking outside the box. It all starts with um, knowing who you are. And you know what? My brothers and sisters have been dumbed down to not know who they are because they don't want you thinking about who you are and uh, going into creative land and thinking outside the box and having an individuality, they want you to be uh, like all the other compliance saves, go along, get along, shut up, put up, sit down, we'll tell you when to jump, when to eat, how high, um, how you can cultivate your garden. We've got Agenda 21 going on all over the place, all over the damn country, and my brothers and sisters have fallen fast asleep. See, folks, they planned it this way. They kept you so damn busy punching a time clock just to sustain yourself so you wouldn't be able to think about your demise how the arbitrary third hand is in your freaking back pocket at every level. And it's huge. It's massive. Oh, yeah, and now we're going to the next level of taxation, folks. Internet tax across the board. They're trying to pass that legislation. 
folks, uh, by the way, the sales tax, I covered that issue, I think, uh, what, what, about uh, a week ago. Um, and I have a beautiful document, and I'll, I'll post that and make sure everybody gets a copy of that. Folks, it only applies to franchisees, uh, for people who are getting a benefit and privilege. It's an excise tax. It's a scam. The one who's supposed to pick up the tab for the sales tax in any state is the corporation that's doing business. But they have you classified as a corporation, too. And I have a document you can read that will prove it irrevocably. And, folks, I'm the knowledge guy. That's all I am. I'm direction of flow. If you want to pull these proverbial rose-colored glasses off, you need to come to my house. If you don't, you know what? The train's going to keep moving down the track, and if you don't get off the damn thing, it's going to run your ass over. It's really that simple. Anyways, I'm done with the rant for now. Oh, very true. Very true. Hey, we can, uh, I feel your passion, Pete. You know what I mean? Uh, you're the man for trying to, you know, like, cause blow the siren, basically. Wake up, wake up, wake up. <laughs> you know? And I feel your passion. I understand the rant, you know, because it's it, we got to start waking up. We got to start taking responsibility. We got to stop being in this in this daydream of. Uh, and I, I know it's hard for life change and the, the you know the to move to this direction. But if we don't, we're not going to have a choice. There's not going to be anything left. Yeah. Um, and you know what? It just comes down to this, folks. When do we start thinking for ourselves? When do we draw the line in the sand? When do we pull the energy out of the vacuum? It's um, it, it blows me away how effectively um, we've all gone to sleep. But I haven't. I'm not the norm. I know I'm not the norm. Um, but it's a beautiful thing. Anyways, um... Anyways, uh... I, I have an idea, Peter, of when that's sure. going to happen. That's going to happen when people stop clinging to their belief systems. Yeah, the false belief systems. I have a, 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 a uh, you know, I'm going to take this caller, and I hope he's sure. got his mind right. I'm going to let him through uh, this one call, and um, we'll share the love. It's all good. Um, I have a caller in the queue. I'll let him on through, um, Andrea. I'll take it. Hello? Hello. Hi, I'm becoming a regular caller from Canada. Um, I appreciate what you're all saying again tonight um, and how you're expressing it. Um, uh, I just wanted to ask what all, I guess all of you thought. I know I might know a little bit more what John thinks, but um, because they've been subject to, he and Jess have been subject to paper terrorism, and uh, I have um, with my children, and uh, what I call a paper prison. So with a court order... I'm prohibited from contact with my children. And this was done four years ago. I know I'm repeating myself to some of your regular listeners, but um, just if you could talk about how we're trying, like uh, John and Jess and I are trying to remove presumptions um, in all ways possible, but we are still subject to that paper terrorism, that paper prison, because... uh, we're caught, like our children are in that system, and for us to try to enforce our rights would land us in actual prison behind the Gray Bar Mm -hmm. Hotel and uh, without our children forever. So really that is what is happening. Anybody that tries to assert their rights over their own flesh and blood ends up in prison. Mm. in the actual prison and loses custody forever, right? And so we're trying to walk that. It's not like so much traversing the systems, but it's like how do... I mean, I know it's just a piece of paper, but because... um, And just going back to what you said, Michelle, um, about uh, the pastor's uh, or um, beliefs um, and and what you said, Peter, about uh, the pastor's deferring to the state, and that's what I found, like... uh, Basically, it doesn't really matter if it's pastors, uh, church members, people in just in society, um, government officials. Not it all allows for denial of of the truth. Of hey, we don't have to do anything if you believe that another man or woman in a black robe called a judge should mm-hmm. know what's best for your children. Then nobody has to do anything. It's called that's denial. That's right. Con- consensus reality. And everybody get on board the belief train because this is what we need you to believe. 
so long as your energy, so long as your consciousness is put into belief systems, you will not have knowledge. You will not have knowing. Look, again, I feel the need to say that's that's where I am on my path, and that's my opinion. <laughs> it seems I've upset some listeners, and that's okay. Um, I don't want to deny them of the thing that they hold most precious, which is their belief systems. But and I would say that... I, at- Actually, Michelle, government people have become like the secular gods, like people, government employees have become the secular gods in society because we're not a religious society anymore on the whole. So replacing the power that priests and pastors used to have, it all is the same. It's like giving our power over to other men and women who have been given, vested with the power in our societal norms, rules, statutes, codes, to take away what is most dear our life energy, which, you know, our children are, couldn't be closer to that essence of who we are. And so when right. you've got uh, state, state government employees uh, being able to take our children and then no pastor, no church pit members, no members of society will actually do anything about it. We just got collective denial. I, I just want. Yeah. I mean, we're trying to remove our presumptions, but we're we're trying to. John, Jeff, I, people like us, are trying to. But how do we enforce that and go get our kids yeah, and I, not land up in prison? You know. <laughs> I'd I'd like to speak actually, Tannis. Okay. Um, when when John when John was mentioning uh, at the beginning of the show. Uh, the process, the story, um, the the most recent chapter in his ongoing saga. I I went ballistic uh, quietly um, because I don't know what I would do in his situation. I do not know what I would do. Um, it's it's being it's as though you're. It's it's a catch-22, damned if you do and damned if you don't. The paper trail, uh, these, these paper terrorists have you bound up completely uh, in paper, and I don't, I don't know what I would do. Because for me to do the right thing would be to go in there and get my children. That's right. For me, that would be the right thing. That's right. And... Um, and uh... And it gets enforced that if you do, the cops will come and the teachers will call and the, the person with the uh, paper document will be able to get you into prison. And then yeah. you don't have your children either. Uh, and you certainly don't have your freedom in prison, but my kids don't have their freedom where they are, and I don't have my freedom either. I mean, I don't know what the answer but I'm I'm with you in that. And it's just... but Alone, to enforce it, the, you know, to say this piece of paper means nothing, Mm-hmm. Their paper terrorist acts on us. I, I mean, we're right. we're we're stymied. Like it it's is a you, it's a unilateral deal, one side. But however, um, it, like I say here, okay, this is where it starts. Um, are you on the voter rolls, ma'am? Yeah. Well, not that I knew of. Like I didn't know. Actually, yeah, Tannis well. is Tannis is DP now as well. She's been uh, DP since uh, going on January. So uh, she's rebutted most of her assumptions as well. Um, through that process, so uh, you know she's she's uh, you know notified them with her DP papers as well, and uh, right. still being ignored. Uh, that that's that seems to be the problem, Pete. You know. Well, that's uh, you know, because yeah, the other the other hundred million don't want to do anything. Uh, see, yeah. mm-hmm. that's the problem when uh, all the sheep stay asleep, and oh, this is just one who's trying, one, the square peg in the round hole. We can beat them down until they we beat them to submission. Sort of like uh, how they're trying to work you, John. Yeah. Uh, Force compliance, hey, hey, folks, let me share some force yeah. compliance with you uh, at the end of a gun uh, in Louisiana. Hey, boys in Louisiana, how you doing? 2007, roadside stop for a seatbelt violation. I started asking questions. He calls for a backup, and uh, I'm going to sign that ticket, or I, I'm going to know the reason why not. Uh, and they both put their hands on their guns uh, to um, force compliance to sign a ticket. Well, gee, uh, whatever happened to free will? Um, gee, the mm-hmm. so force compliance at the end of a gun uh, gave this uh, a valid uh, gave a valid contract make. I don't think so. But see, mm-hmm. folks, because everybody's still dead asleep, uh, we let this shit go on and we get m- mauled, m- uh, beat down, uh, controlled because we're not good compliance slaves. 
We're trying to step outside the box, and oh, we'll be damned. We'll have none of that. Uh, well, it's a control mechanism. That's all it is. So if you can't see it for what it really is, and I have a sister over in California who went to court, and the judge was screaming at her to the top of his lungs, uh, a real good bad actor, uh, to get her to just subscribe to the paradigm. Well, yeah, there we go. Tricks is for kids hour, folks. Uh, this is what I don't subscribe to. So, you know what? If you want to get the memo, come over to private.me. We're going to talk about doing some heavy lifting on how to remove presumptions, how to rescind mm-hmm. signatures on documents. See, because until you do such, you have not removed a presumption. They think that you have a game because you have given over willy-nilly through registration, applications, all this other garbage. And, I, I, you know, I had somebody, um, a friend of mine, saying, well, we need to create a document that fixes it all. Well, you stepped into all of them individually, separately, at different times in your life, so you need to cut the nexus as you go. So um, I'm sorry, I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not the magic man. I don't have a magic wand, but I do have direction of flow. So if this, if this resonates, I want everybody to come over to my house and start getting their learn on because if you don't, you, uh, the learn you're going to get, or i.e. the class that you're going to be um, put through, is not going to be a. Um, it's not going to be one that you're going to probably come through on the other side in in a positive fashion. Anyways, hey, um, mm-hmm. hey Peter, that's, it looks like that's uh, the thing, Tannis. It's it, people like you and uh, John and Jesse who are going through these these processes right now. We're, we're all learning as we're doing, and mm-hmm. because we don't. Um, put our energy into uh, their belief system, well, it is our very belief in their system that buttresses, that supports uh, their foundation. You know, this entire thing is a house of cards. And I'm going to go esoteric a little bit here, but it has to do with consciousness. Um, And and again, I don't know. I I don't have children. I don't know... Uh, what I would do if I were in your situation or John and Jesse's situation. Um, I don't know. I can speculate. Um, If I were to receive a paper and some cops came and took my children away um, and then it's the whole uh, court system, legal prosecutors and uh, judges, I, I, I don't know. I would go esoteric on their asses. Um, what would you do? I, like esoteric? That's it. it I, I don't know how to define it. I would. It has to do with energies. It has to do with with not allowing my energy to go to where they want to guide it to go to. And they throw you in physical prison. I mean, that's what people are trying to avoid that's because that's what a I threat. Mean. No, no, that's but that's not what I mean. What, but what you, if you're physically is, in prison, though, would you be able to, you know, would that would that get you out of there? Like that's that's really the the game, right? I was threatened with prison if I didn't turn okay. my children over. So if I go see them uh, against this court order, I yeah, go to prison. Yeah, but that's not a negotiation, Tannis. Let's let's get clear on this. That's not a negotiation. Give me your children, or you go to jail. That's not well, a I know it's not. Of course, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> that's called forced compliance, like Peter was saying. Of course, it's not a negotiation. Right. And that's what they're saying. It's not. It's non-negotiable because they get to decide. They have, they, they have people mesmerized, like teachers. They have yeah. all the government employees bowing down to them, just like people used to bow down to priests, like without question. They have in question. And, and un- what, if you treat, what if you treat these people? What if I were to treat these people the same way as I treat everybody? which means equitably, fairly, respectably, respectfully. What if I treat these people the same way? It's, I, I, I'm not talking about actions necessarily. I'm talking about the intent of the actions. Um, and this is really difficult for me to explain. It, it has to do with energies. It, it has to do with taking the energies that are present and transmuting them. Well, I see them as all equal. I don't see them as superior. In fact, that's how I talk. Like, none of these people, they're men and women. They're not superior to me, and they don't know my children better than I do. But they've got the guns and badges. They can force Mm -hmm. compliance. They can put you into prison. You know, it's true. That's what they're doing. (laughs) With people that, uh, like, with extreme orders like John and Jess and I have over our kids' lives, that's what they're doing. They're putting us in prison. Pardon? 
mm-hmm. especially with no charges. Like it's one thing yeah, to with know, no charge charges. a parent for something, you know, and take their kids, but to have no charge whatsoever no just charges. because of their belief systems, and, this, you know what I mean? But yeah. this is the warfare. This, yeah. this it is, is the, the warfare. Battlefield. It is being fought on the level of your consciousness. And if you will go to lower energy uh, actions that go, go to actions that are informed by lower energies, this is what they want. This is what they want. And in fact, it's required for them of you that that you go to belligerence, that well, you go right. to... And let me let me just uh, let me share something. Two seconds. We have got to go to break anyways in a minute. Um, I had a brother of mine. They gave him an offer. Uh, they said you could report to jail or not. Uh, basically, they gave him an offer. He returned their offer, rescinded the offer, and they knew that he rescinded the offer, and they couldn't move forward. You had to con- he had to consent. They said, hey, you can come meet us down. Bring some ID at this date or not. And he did he did the or not, and he actually operated in the proper capacity. Um, returned their offer and. Basically, it was a counteroffer, and they did, they couldn't move forward. I mean, see, because of our educational um, non-education, um, nobody knows how to think outside the box. Hey, yeah, folks, you don't have to mm-hmm. accept offers. Yeah. Uh, we keep accepting freaking offers, anyway. Exactly. Okay. And, well, just, and if you're uh, in a court so we, situation, so, it sounds on, simple. Just, just, okay. Just, it I sounds just simple. I just want to explain how they've do. done it. I do. Let me just explain it because it sounds simple. Well, no, no, simple. we don't. We are, uh, Tannis, uh, matter of fact, um, I'm sorry, sweetie, um, Okay. We're going to go to break, uh, and um, you can hang out for the rest of the show or whatever, but, uh, yeah, we're not going to do this the whole damn show, sweetie. I'm okay. sorry. Uh, That's uh, okay. This is uh, diverting me from my path. I'm sorry. Okay. Uh, I can't fix your issue, uh, but I, I appreciate you sharing. We love you. And um, just uh, yes, stand on back, and we'll all move on forward. Back to the downhill slide, folks. Uh, yeah, it's been, uh, we've been on the slippery slide tonight. It's been a beautiful show. Uh, welcome to In the Spirit of Things. <clears throat> and... Um, Anyways, uh, yeah, I didn't mean to get short with you, Tannis. Uh, I'm just trying to keep direction of flow, keeping this thing fluid, because, um, like I said, we can't resolve these issues on the phone but um, or on the blog talk. Anyways, uh, but for my brothers and sisters who are in the mix for this, uh, the IRS insanity, hey, folks, go take a look. Uh, matter of fact, I'm going to make sure on this YouTube it will be put when it gets posted by um, Verdict Productions uh, for consumption. I will post the... Um, video for um, Freedom to Fascism, as well as the attaching three pages of documents uh, showing that the IRS is nothing but a whore corporation, a private corporation, not a government agency. And um, you got to love it uh, because, see, folks, they don't operate with good intent. They don't operate uh, in light. They operate totally in dark. See, folks, they actually use what's called pseudonyms for their names. They've got a high behind a false name. What type of organization hides behind false names? I mean, hey, if we're operating all in love and honor and honesty and integrity, you wouldn't have to hide behind a freaking pseudonym. Yeah, I didn't know that crap until I started opening my eyes uh, back about 12 years ago on uh, really digging in. Yeah, if you really want to get your mind right on the tax scam, yeah, go over to familyguardian.org, and yeah, it'll blow your ever-loving mind. Um, Chris Hansen, ex-Navy, another ex-Navy brother. you got to love my ex-Navy brothers. Uh, they're all over the place, like Walter with... Kaffer1.com, and you got Peter over here. Uh, hey, yeah, all us uh, land lovers. Uh, we all went. To, we went. To, we are no longer sailing on the Admiralty. Our ship has gone aground. We are land lovers. It's a beautiful thing. Anyways, um, I think I have another call in the queue, and if that be so, I will take that call as long as it's a. Uh, the yeah, we got Brother Barry. Um, yeah, uh, let him on through. Brother Barry, come on in. The water's fine. Hey. What's up, brother? Well, it's good to talk to you, Peter. Finally, yeah. Hey, brother, uh, I'm binded up. Uh, I'm um, uh, my clone machine broke. It sucks. <laughs> <laughs> I uh, I had a couple of thoughts for the new people who are listening. It might help them understand what you're saying about the estate and the estate tax. Yeah. Uh, the first thing in my old profession I had to do is identify the monster that I'm dealing with. I was an arborist, so I had to figure out what tree am I looking at. I don't think most people know what the government actually is. You keep saying it's a private corporation, but have you explained that this is a crown corporation registered in the city of London? Right. Oh, yeah, it's definitely all under the crown. Uh, Yeah, matter of fact, uh, brother, I have articles 
giving verifiable uh, education by the informer who's covered this uh, succinctly, but no, I can't get nobody to read. That's the problem. I got a stack of stuff from the informer. He's a good guy. He's what, about 73 uh, now? <laughs> yeah, I love his stuff. Uh, yeah, he uh, yeah he talks about person, sovereign citizen, all these vernacular. By my brothers are up in um, it's good stuff. Yeah, I just I just think that it's it, it's it's helpful because uh, you and I we know, uh, but others are listening to this conversation in the middle, and we haven't started at the beginning that we're dealing with the Crown Corporation in both Canada and in the American states. Yep. Uh, the the thing that was created here called the United States back in 1774 is actually a crown corporation. Yep. And what the founding fathers wanted was independent management. They weren't really looking for separation from England, so they just wanted King George to let them run the plantation here and take a cut. Yep. And that's that's pretty much where it started. But... I don't think people even know what government is or what the word government means. Over men. I think it actually comes from two words. I've looked it up. One is govern, which means to limit, cap, or control. And the second word is meant, which is a state of mind. So a government is a mind control operation. Yeah. Now, there's two kinds of government. There's what's called a lawful government, which would limit your thinking to not robbing, raping, or murdering your neighbor. That's a lawful government. And then there's what we have today, which is a legal government. And the job of the legal government is to convince you that it's okay to, for them to come and kidnap your neighbor and take them away to prison. Yep. Or take someone's children. So that's a mind control operation to lie to people and deceive them so that you can steal, uh, just wantonly steal from people. Yep. So th those are a couple of the definitions. And then the word state and estate yep. are very closely, closely linked. So when we talk about the state, we talk about the roads, we talk about the national forests, the Navy ships, and what most people don't realize is the public corporations are part of the state. Yep. So the state comes from the estates of all of the people who have who have died. Yep. Did not claim their shares in the road, the National Forest, the Navy, and Ford Motor Company. They've simply left them to future generations in a trust in the state. Very good. I and that goes that. on for hundreds of years. Yep. So if you go back and and research your ancestors, you'll find that their names still exist on these trusts, and they have these millions of shares in the state. And uh, those of us who are alive have left the government as trustee of our ancestors' property instead yep. of thinking for ourselves and managing it. So it's our own fault. Yep. We fell asleep. They, they, well, they helped put us to sleep a little bit, too. Diversion. Yeah, I, I think it's both. <laughs> yep. So every, everything is a state tax and it comes under admiralty salvage that they're yep. saying, well, you know, you, you're not really using this property, so we're coming in and we're salvaging it for the state for uh, future generations. But in fact, what they do is then the public officials simply steal everything they can from your state. Right, they steal the beneficial interest because they, they, they thought you didn't want it when you went to court. They uh, drafted you for performance, you gave over, and they got a game. Yeah, yeah. I'm trying to figure out how much they tricked me into signing over to them. Uh, I think that the bonds that I signed were worth $240 million. Right. The closest hypothecation I can figure on the bid, payment, and performance bonds that I signed in court. Right. And when I signed them in court, don't hold me to that because they had me in chains. So technically, right. it wasn't an act of free will. My hand right. was forced. Yep. I don't want to be held accountable for that because I didn't really sign it. Um, and that brings up another issue with uh, the folks who have lost their kids. They have to have your permission, so they scare you or trick you or do something. Yep. Get you to sign over those kids. You have to sign them over. Yep. So it's a series of pledges, the birth certificate, the Social Security application, the school application, the immunization permission. They've got all these signatures from you, 
and now you want to object. Yep. So that's that's the problem. And if that's you, where I'm going, brother. I'm going to be going to Cision Recision Valley. Uh, we're going to have some fun with that. If you yeah, if you don't want to do that, and they're forcing you, and I did not completely understand this when they they put it to me after starving me for four months in the hole. Uh, those people who haven't been to jail don't know what the hole is. You don't want to know. No. You have to write on there without prejudice to keep your common law rights. You put without prejudice, and then if they're threatening you or putting you under duress, you put under threat, duress, and protest. The Chinese will not buy the paper. Everything right. you sign is commercial paper and has a value, millions of yep. dollars probably. Yep. The Chinese will not buy the paper if they see that the slave is awake and objects to mm. its owner. Yep. So that's one thing you should start doing right away is if they're they're trying to contract with you and you don't want to contract with them, just write on there without prejudice, I, sign your name, put Mickey Mouse, whatever you like, and then put yep. under threat, press, and protest. And none right. of the bond buyers in the world will buy it. Right. And also, brother, um, uh, I uh, followed a banker, a buddy of mine out of Texas. Uh, I'll give him kudos, uh, brother Hines. Uh, he always says, never, ever give an unencumbered signature. Always go by with a colon if you're going to give up the signature. And uh, we talk a little bit about boxing the signature because it removes it from the page. Um, but um, we haven't gone down that road too often. But, uh, yeah, everything I uh, – matter of fact, when I do um, postal money orders, I do buy, colon, Peter Eugene, put them in a box so they can't rehypothecate the paper. Yeah, that's that's a good idea. Um, one of my favorite things in a box is the traffic ticket. If you turn it on its side and look at it, it has the name, address, and account number. The Social Security number is an account number, bank account Right. Number. And then at the top, it has a signature line and a date. Everything else is in a box, which means it's excluded from the document. Right. What the cop is trying to get you to do is to give you... Uh, to give him your credit information on your bank account and mm-hmm. sign him a check. That's an actual check that you just signed him for $235. Right, and then they hypothecate it for a whole bunch more behind closed doors. Right, but the information in the box on the traffic ticket, which is the whole body of the traffic ticket, does not exist in the document because it's in a box. Right. It just blows people's minds when they realize all they did is pull you over to sell you a ticket to their theater. That's it. That's it. <laughs> I just love that one. Yep. Well, that's about all I really had to say. Is uh, hey, you know, know, hey, brother Barry, I, I apologize for not getting up with you sooner. Um, let's hook up tomorrow. Um, I got your I got your email and stuff, and uh, we'll talk further and um, share some love. <laughs> okay. I just wanted people to think about what the government is. It's a mind control, either for good or for evil. Yep. And that the state is really just the property that's been abandoned by our ancestors and by ourselves at this time because we haven't claimed our actual shares. We have Federal Reserve, Reserve Note shares in the state, and each of us has some ridiculous number uh, exceeding a billion dollars. Yep. So people just need to know that, and they need to be careful about what they sign. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah, uh, yeah, well... <clears throat> Well, um, yeah, that's why we're going to go down uh, another avenue um, over at privatist.me, and we're going to talk about how to rescind signatures, uh, because if you're a slave on the plantation, you don't have the right to challenge anything. If you don't remove that presumption of being part of the body politic, you got sold a lie of left, right, uh, in the middle. It's a scam. It's all a corporation, folks. So this is what we teach over at my house. As a matter of fact, I want to put videos on every damn document uh, so you can have direction of flow of exactly how to do the document and properly uh, rescind, uh, remove, and uh, ab initio, non pro tongue to the day of inception. So they uh, know that you remove the presumption, because until you take an action, you stood static. You are in dead man's land. So and I know Barry's probably well aware of this. So um, anyways, yeah. Uh, Barry, uh, yeah, we're going to get up tomorrow, and uh, I thank you for coming on the show and sharing some love. Thank you very much. Uh, glad to be of help. Thanks, Peter. Have a great night. I'll catch up with you tomorrow. All righty, bye. Thank you. Okay. Uh, yep. And so, folks, um, yeah, that's a, that's a brethren who's actually gotten some of the memos, obviously. He's been paying attention. See, we're not all dead asleep. Well, that's all right. We can change that. We can change all of that very simply. 
This is why we created privatist.me. I'm going to, yeah, hey, folks, yeah, I'm uh, exposing upon my house. But if you don't come over to my house, you're never going to get the memo. And if you never get the memo, it's going to be the same sorry crap being stuffed down your throat because you haven't changed your paradigm. And if you don't change your paradigm, there's nobody who can change it for you but you. But I can't help you change it if you're not willing to come to my house. So please, go sign up for free. Get your game on. It's got eight simple steps to follow with direction of flow. I went over it with a friend of mine from New Hampshire because she wasn't following the bouncing ball. Folks, it's a very simple ball to follow. You don't have to read all the documents, but at the very minimum, please, you know, go through the steps and uh, follow um, and watch what I ask to watch because until you have clarity of thought and clarity of mind, a clouded mind says no. So I'm going to give you direction of flow so you can remove these, like I say, these uh, goggles. Uh, anyways, uh, folks, we're fixing to step it up a notch. I'm going to YouTube hell. Uh, I'm going to be posting uh, all these documents for all our fully paid members. So they're going to have direction of flow on a whole different level. I'm going to be making YouTubes on all this information. And it's simple, folks. Uh, it's just removing presumptions. That's all it is. Rescinding signatures on contracts is removing presumptions. Because until you do such... They think you like where you're at, and they're going to let you stay. In the, so it's sort of like free will, uh, i.e. the song. Even though you've made a choice and done nothing, you still made a choice by doing nothing, period. So do something. Hey, change your paradigm. Anyways, um, I'm going to get with uh, Michelle. She wanted to share some love. on Sweetie, I'm sorry this thing grew tentacles. Um, yeah. Share some love. That That's what usually happens on the show, though. The, you know, we open up so many brackets, and uh, we go down the rabbit hole in different uh Different directions. Um, yep. Yeah, I, I I just wanted to uh, to mention a quote from Giordano Bruno, uh, who was a true Renaissance man. Um, has to do about uh, has to do with truth. Uh, he's attributed to have said, "Truth does not change because it is or is not believed by the majority of the people." Yep. I'm going to read that again. Truth yep. does not change because it is or is not believed by the majority of the people. And what I wanted to tell Tanis uh, before uh, we went to break, um, this this is a, a, a war being fought on the level of consciousness. Um, and all the systems that exist now are to bring about, are to bring your consciousness to lower levels. Um, and it's your choice. It's the choice of each one of us uh, how we're going to vote, I guess. Um, I'm having difficulty putting these things into words today. I was, um, for a few hours, um, in some kind of esoteric, etheric kind of trying to find words for things uh fog earlier today so i'm not quite grounded <laughs> so unfortunately i i guess i don't have much more to say that's all right uh, anyways uh this has been uh one hell of a ride today uh folks uh like i say i'm going to post uh these uh the three-page documents so you can see the corporate horrors in action uh to see the real deal yeah, I downloaded that over to the site, uh, but I guess uh, people still didn't. So I'm going to start pulling stuff out of uh, in, put it in the in the light. And so yes, this will all this information uh, that we're covered tonight, uh, as far as the um, uh, the IRS and corporation papers, 1933 in Delaware. You'll be able to go see it for yourself since you're from the Show Me State, and I love that because I don't want you to believe hearsay, and I want you to watch Freedom to Fascism. So I'm going to have Brother Zach post it in this YouTube when he posts it up for consumption. It'll be posted on our YouTube page over at my house at privatist.me, and as well as at I Am Free Will. So everybody will be able to um, go and get the memo uh, and see what I speak of. And, uh, yeah, that's why I say those that sign up on privatist.me get the memos and the attachments, the links, uh, because I like to cover topics so I can have everybody follow the bouncing ball. Anyways, um, huh. Anyways, uh, I guess I'm running out of steam. Go figure. Uh, <laughs> 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 but, uh, hey, folks, um, you know, it's really, really, um, like I say, we keep giving over consent. Uh, it's time to draw a line in the sand. Like I say, it's uh, paper terrorism to the extreme. Yeah, if you don't like the love letters they're sending you, hey, undeliverable is addressed. 
you know what, I want to start a campaign. Return all um, corporate whores, uh, correspondence so they get backlogged and bundled up in a beautiful way uh, so they, don't, they get the memos that we aren't accepting correspondence from liars, crooks, and thieves. Um, it's a beautiful thing. So, yeah, hey, Peter? It gets, yes? How would you send those back? What would you put on those documents? I don't put nothing on no documents. I don't just, open documents. First of all, you, you just, can't open the damn mailer, bro. So you just send them back uh, undeliverable? Undeliverable, yeah. You get that envelope that with the cookie inside. They get yeah. to keep that son of a bitch. Undeliverable, <laughs> as addressed, return to sender, put an X through the freaking corporate name, put deceased above it, have some fun, tell them to send it off to 55 Water Street, Department Trust Corporation, New York, New York, give them a freaking zip, and put, uh, yeah, I don't handle bullshit from the trustee. That's your job later. <laughs> Nice. Anyways, I mean, simple stuff like that. You know, I yeah. mean, hey, I use my imagination, and um, it's just trolls looking to get a friggin' res, i.e. your res, your energy, folks. It's really that simple. If you don't like the love letter, don't open the damn thing. I don't open up crap from clowns in the circus. I quit a long time ago. And, you know, they can send me, uh, they can send me their paper terrorism until my ass falls off. I'm not going to accept it. You can't force me to accept a piece of worthless piece of paper trying to draft some dead entity who lives in a box at 55 Water Street for performance. So let's share the love. And, hey, this is, we're going to start the campaign. This is a, the return the garbage campaign from Peter. Um, and just, uh, yeah, tell him Peter told you. I don't give a shit. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, hey, yeah, folks, you, do you need permission to consent to return something that you don't want? Uh, no, you, uh, you just you take an action. Hello, that's a... Uh, this is what I'm talking about, thinking outside the box and start thinking outside the box. Quit accepting garbage from liars, crooks, and thieves, especially third-party bottom feeders. Yeah, folks, if you're having third-party bottom feeder issues, come over to my house. Yeah, all my full members get the package free. Michael just completed the international package. It's huge. It's massive. It's beautiful. It's easy to follow. Direction of flow. I'm going to put a special video just for that together as well on a YouTube because I'm trying to give everybody direction of flow. So I, I guess i got to do some more heavy lifting, which I don't mind because I love my brothers and sisters. I want them to know how to operate with competence, and that's why you got to come to my house for the education. The documents are free, but the education is not. So you know what? i got to keep my lights on, and, but I'm not operating in commerce because you're going to pay for your education. You're going to pay for it the hard way, or you're going to pay for it the easy way. It's your option. Hey, you've been doing it the hard way your entire life. Come on over and try and do it the easy way, I promise. Hey, you're going to have a... Um, much better results, I promise. Anyways, um, what do you think, John? Uh, have I lost my ever-loving mind or what? <laughs> well, like I say, a sane man in an insane world. That's what yeah. the problem is. So. I, I think I think you're stark raving sane. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and I keep having my big cup, but it's just not working. <laughs> hey, you know, all, all the you know, the world uh, should thank people like you, though. You know what I mean? The the ones that are actually you know out there trying to help, not out there just to do for selfish reasons, just to generally help people. Uh, and by helping other people, helping themselves too, you know. And uh, we need to really thank, uh, you know, people like you that are out there that are, you know, brave enough to stand up in the breach and, uh, you know, wake people up, you know, with nothing but good intentions. And, uh, you know, hey, hey, wake up, shake the shoulders. <laughs> yeah. So, I, I love you, Pete. All right, thank you, brother. I love you too. And, hey, folks, uh, yeah, we can share the love. And, that's you know, I come from the heart. Because uh, it's all I got. Uh, if you listen to these songs that we just played tonight uh, from Kansas, in the spirit of things, it has meaning. Uh, listen, if you listen to the words, um, you know, uh, one man, one heart, uh, one woman, one heart. We're supposed to be operating from the heart, not from the dead man's side, with no feeling, no emotion, to share the love with our brothers and sisters, go out of our way to do a kind act for one another. Um, and if I can make somebody smile, laugh, Hopefully not cry. Well, I'm probably making everybody cry on this phone call today, making everybody's ears bleed. But you know what? Um, I'm really showing the love. This is how I show the love. I am verbose. I'm sort of loud. But you know what? It's, if I didn't care, I wouldn't say a damn thing. I'd keep my mouth shut and let everybody defend, uh, fend for themselves. But that's not where I live. It's not a viable option. I've drawn my line in the sand. When are you going to draw yours? So come over to my house, and let's get this game on. 
I want everybody at the buffet table, and you have the right to be there if you're willing to make uh, take an action. And that, that's why it's all done on the private. So over there, I can talk all, really about what I really want. Out here, uh, I've got to be generalization because there was a couple, you know, some people on the call saying, "Oh, I thought this was an educational show." Yeah, it's an education. It's an education for the rest of your life to get your mind right and come off the damn slave plantation and get your minds right. Um, so yeah, we don't talk about specifics here, but we do over at my house. So if you're not signed in at my house, go get signed in at privatist.me, and it's on the it's on the cover page uh, um, in the spirit of things. Uh, we post uh, links, icons, whatever we want, whatever yeah, everybody else calls them. I'm technologically deficient, uh, but we're sharing the love. Uh, you know, <laughs> we're giving you easy access to get through the front door. And um, come on in. The water is fine. Michelle, you got uh, anything to share with me before we close out in three minutes? No, nope, I think that was very well said, Peter. Yeah, uh, like I say, if everybody thinks it's about the money, they miss the vote. It's not about the money. They, it's about the money to the clowns of the circus, and they'll be glad to um, abscond uh, your assets, your hypothecation events, um, until your butt falls off, and it doesn't have to mm-hmm. be that way. But you have to make a decision, and you have to make a concerted effort uh, to carry a little bit of your own water. I am all about direction of flow. If you don't believe it, go over to the site and take a look at it. And uh, it's the follow the bouncing ball hour, eight steps. I'm fixing to go to deeper, heavier lifting with YouTubes on direction of flow on administrative process uh, so that you can remove presumptions, folks, because until you do so, they think you're happy where you're at. So we're going to move you in a new direction if you want to come over to my house. It's beautiful. Mm. And John, and you keep uh, reminding me. Peter, as you keep reminding me, you are three steps ahead of of the curve. So it's true. What you're doing is um, most most people won't understand what you're doing. That's yeah. why maybe there's so much resistance. Yeah, that's great. Uh, though they can keep resisting until their brakes get beat off, then they'll get their mind right when nothing else is left. And then guess what? Hey, paradigm shift. It's beautiful. And hey, mm-hmm. brother Tim, I'm 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 throwing a shout out to my brother Tim from Costa Rica. He uh, sent me my big cup. Thank you, brother. I love you. <laughs> <laughs> he just posted it in my uh, Skype geez. box. I, I love it when my brother shares a love like that. He gave me my big cup. I got the memo. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, folks, hey, it's been a beautiful show. And, hey, folks, hang loose because um, <clears throat> right now I'm working on something for Saturday nights. It's going to be sort of a surprise. I'm working on it. I, I'm not going to let the cat out of the bag. So I guess you got to come back Saturday and get the new memo, because it's going to be a beautiful one, and I'm writing it. So on that note, um, we're going to sign off, uh, share the love in the spirit of things. Um, hey, folks, uh, yeah, let me share the love over in 5D. Uh, we love you, too, and um, I'm giving you a shout-out anyways, even though I don't have to. Um, anyways, uh, John, thank you so much for sharing um, your In the Breach experience. Thanks for uh, having me again, Pete. Yeah, um, I'll have to bring a bigger flashlight. I'm working on it. Hey, my batteries <laughs> keep running down. <clears throat> Anyways, Michelle, I thank you for being here. I'm sorry I um I I, I ranted tonight. I couldn't help That's myself. Okay. <laughs> it's okay. Peter, I love you. John, I love you. Thank you, love guys. Love you too, Michelle. <laughs> All right, hey everybody, hey uh, go do what you do and take a when you take your break. We'll catch you Saturday. Uh, we love you. <laughs> we'll catch you on the rebound. In the spirit of things, folks, we'll be back Saturday night, seven to nine, not five to seven. Just wanted to make sure. I've decided to give continuity a flow, and it's all seven and nines on Tuesday, Wednesdays, and Saturdays. We'll catch you on the rebound. Go over to private.me, get your game on, and so you can get the next memo for uh, Saturday when I post, because uh, I will put attachments. Um, you won't have to go looking for it. Anyways, y'all, thank, uh, y'all have a great night. We love you. We'll catch you on the rebound. Bye-bye. Good night. Bye.